Looking back through history and seeing the political divisions and fighting between parties, you might wonder whether this is a natural state of political activity or if it's uniquely designed in order to gain and keep power. Hey, this is Justin Hit with Inside Strategic Relations. I'm going to share with you something today that is very powerful when you understand it. It helps you gain control, better influence over your own life, and drive forward towards the goals and objectives you desire. Now, with it, like anything that we share, it can be used in the wrong ways. In fact, there's a spectrum it's kind of a circle and it has different blocks that connect you. There's a spectrum of chaos, producer, consumer, and destroyer. Now, you can apply these methods of control and gaining influence to be a producer. That's where I want you to be. But you can also do it to consume, to destroy, and to create chaos. So on this spectrum, we want to dial in the production. So we're going to take chaos in your life. We're going to take chaos in the political world. We're going to take chaos in the economy, and we're going to organize it, understanding the principles that I will share here today so that we can get more of what we want, be a a pillar to our community, and deliver value to the people around us. Now, I titled this How They Divide, and we're going to talk specifically how those in power build bridges and alliances in private, while stirring up separation, anxiety, and fear in the public. They literally divide and conquer to produce a position where they can come in as the hero. Now, I'm uniquely qualified to deliver this information, and I don't usually talk about this in public because it sounds like conspiracy. But if you look at the great books of influence, 48 Laws, if you look at Rules to Radicals, if you look at different uh, The True Believer, If you look at the books and the studies of psychology, it shows that by dividing people, you're more easily able to build them back in your image. Now, you can go back into ancient philosophy. The Art of War talks about this. It's a lot easier to fight a splintered and segmented army than it is a solid and uniform army. But it is a misconception that you need sameness or unity in order to have mutual objectives achieved. So there's this problem. Politicians need to gain re-election and stay in power to continue the career that they've chosen. Now, I'm not going to say bad against politicians. It's the nature of their job to get re-elected, to seek alliances, to connect individuals. But it's also in the nature of their job, being in the public, that they need that strong emotion of fear. If, you, if they elect my opponent, they will take your benefits away. That doesn't mean anything. They have to be specific. If you elect my opponent, elder care will be removed and it will be harder for older folks to live day to day. Prices will increase, yet your social security will be removed. See, it's a specific divide and conquer. Now, in the marketing world, it's market segmentation. But what politicians do is they specifically break groups apart because their challenge to power is a group that could raise another candidate. So if you gain infighting between the two, by the way, I believe in the the ancient scriptures that the devil was actually a behavioral characteristic of a politician. I'm not saying they are the politicians are devils. I'm saying that the behavioral characteristics of tearing things apart, destroying things so that you can come in and say, "Hey, I can save you." See, people want a savior. It's built into our genetics. It's built into our we want things to be better. In fact, many of you on this newsletter have come here because you want to be the person who helps their community, who builds up a family, who builds up a wealth, influence, respect. There's nothing wrong with that. But are you doing it by producing value? Or are you doing it by consuming value? Or are you doing it by destroying things? See, if you're producing value in the marketplace, Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, uh, Elon Musk, at some point in their life, they produced far more value through corporations to put them 
at these brand names. Now, they're never perfect. Nobody is ever perfect. In fact, in your local community, there are highly respected individuals who have built that community. They're all not perfect either. But the point being is that you, they gain that respect by delivering far more than they consume. Nobody is praising or emulating or seeking to learn the behaviors of the person who sits on the couch and eats potato chips all day. In fact, there's so many of them, you really you, there isn't a uniform plan that these folks have. But if you look across the spectrum of individuals that are worthy of biographies, individuals who have led the nation through struggles, individuals who have contributed to society, they all have things in common. And one of the things in common is that they are organizers of people. Now, a political person who destroys is going to break things apart and then reassemble them in their likeness and then use those groups against each other so that they can maintain power. I'm arguing you don't have to do that. I'm arguing you can produce value in a marketplace. You can respect individuals' privacy privacy and property rights and individual autonomy, and you can still get the results, but it's the same method of reassembly that gives you the power in the marketplace. Are you able to build bridges? Are you able to build alliances? See, once you taste power, you'll always want more. It's like a stretched wallet never contracts. Once you've experienced the good life of having all the money you need and being able to make the financial decisions that you want without thinking much about the dollars, it's hard to go back. And that's why a lot of people who are are wealthy with a booming economy fail in a constricting economy because they don't have the underlying concept and mental focus in order to understand it's not about consuming, not about earning money so you can consume. It's not about earning money so you can get back at somebody, even though that is a motivation. It's about earning money earning influence, earning value in the marketplace so that you can multiply that value. See, as a, as, a, as a society, as a species, we don't get better destroying what we've got. We've got to cultivate it. Now, this bleeds into an environmentalism where they say, well, you know, we have to conserve nature. Uh, there, it, this bleeds over into health and fitness. You can't use, if you're burning it, the candle at both ends and you're working around the clock, not getting any sleep, you can't grow as a person. There are all these different factors that in excess limit the desire in which that excess is moving towards. The only real solution, again, is to assemble groups of individuals who all have mutual gain or mutual desires and move towards the objective together. This gives you time to get the right amount of exercise and work-life balance and and the amount of health and nutrition and sleep that you need because there's other people doing this. You're not going at it alone. And it also starts building up communities of individuals who can resist this destruction and reorganization because they have common themes or it's a common desire. Uh, If you're not aware, the Amish in the United States have lived their way of life for hundreds of years, despite political changes, despite uh, outside influences. There's religious groups, there's social and fraternal organizations that have been able to maintain and improve their quality of membership. Now, they don't always increase in quality of membership because as these external distractions come, And by the way, some of what you produce might be considered an external distraction to others. Uh, we We have to account for that. But ultimately, what we have is one group or even many groups practicing deception rather than transparency, rather than improvement, rather than involvement. Now, this deception has a problem because the more you practice deception, the more it requires bigger and bigger lies to cover up the lies you gave before. It's, in fact, extremely resource intense. You'll have to build organizations and legal coverage and uh, structures and stuff to hide what you're doing because you are concerned either ethically or, or uh, you know, you're harming people. Let's move away from that. Let's understand you can still have power and influence. You can still have the strength in the marketplace. You can still have the respect and tenure without being a public figure, 
without causing harm to other people, without distracting from individuals' outcomes and desires. So here, what do we do? So first off, in general, some of the solutions are getting to know the other person. You always want to spend time listening to the positions of the other individual. Politicians will privately invest hours and days into understanding the position of their opposition. It's easier to fight an enemy you understand. Now, you don't necessarily have to create enemies. You can start understanding a, a certain market segmentation and the challenges that they have. And if they have the economic capital in that, in that market segment, then you create a product that they're looking for and you deliver that product to them. And then you can be completely independent from all of what's going on around you as long as that audience is getting what they desire. Now, without getting into competition and stuff, getting to understand the other doesn't mean you are silenced by them. So I want to hear about your concerns, your frustrations, but the uh, concerns and frustrations don't have to become mine. Does that make sense? Pay close attention here. If somebody is angry or if they knew your true position on something, they would be angry and you take the time to understand their position and then they choose not to take the time to understand your position, you now can move away from that relationship. Another thing to consider. Understand that everything you see in public media, everything you hear come out of the mouth of a politician or somebody in leadership, all of it is crafted communications and I would even say propaganda. So what I'm sharing with here here today, I'm trying to give you a few tidbits that you can go take action with, but I know in my heart of hearts that this could be a two or three day coaching session where we break down the goals and objectives you have and we look at the different groups that you serve and then we look at the marketplace and we look at your aspirations and inspiration. We look at how your product impacts the customer. We look at all these details. That's really what you need to know. But I'm not going to be able to get you from where you are to where you need to be, how to, how to get you through that transformation, unless you first understand that there's these little concepts out here, that there are ways that people divide and that you don't have to divide people. That's a destroyer mentality. But you can see the different segments in the marketplace and find commonalities, build the bridges and bring those individuals together. You'll get the same outcome. It's just you won't have all the negative aspects of that divide and conquer, of that building you know, fear and anger. You can actually be the positive light that people move towards. So another thing people talk about is, is to judge actions and not words. Now that's easier to do when you're in an uh, individual relationship where you know the people, where you interact with the people. And I'm going to give you three action steps that you take to benefit from what I'm sharing here today. But here's the point. Uh, when you're seeing somebody on television, when you're seeing somebody in a presentation, you're seeing somebody on social media, uh, you can't know by their words alone what they would really do. See, it's really easy to be an armchair critic of something, but let's judge people by their actions. Now, in a virtual world, you cannot see people's actions easily. Um, the actions of a corporation, it's hard to see those actions. So what you have to do is, again, look at the outcome of those actions, look at the, the behavioral characteristics of those actions, and ultimately judge based on that. And I know it says you should, you should not judge people. We're not judging people. We're judging intentions. We're deciding whether or not we want to invest time or resources in that, with that individual. Uh, the last point before I give you these three steps to take home is that very often you'll see politicians using the dead. And this is why I have this analogy between uh, the, the, some of the political behaviors and the devil because they will raise up these demons and they'll say, that person supported so-and-so who was a racist. Well, that person's dead, so that person can't defend themselves. Next, the person that they're blaming and, and building this association is now putting the burden of proving that they are not also like the person who is being accused uh, it's just a mess. And so you'll often hear politicians uh, raise up the dead in the sense of so-and-so would have supported that. And that's why we're doing it this way. Now, that's a manipulation technique that builds credibility and anchors the individual who's trying to gain a position of power with someone who already has power. Now, it's not necessarily a bad technique. 
It's just you have to be aware that to build support and to convey ideas, you may need to reach back into historical examples of what is right and good, what is building community versus destroying community. So let's get to these three steps. Okay, I could go on three days on this topic. In fact, I wrote a report on this for a client a while back. Uh, the key to understand here is there are specific ways they divide. Who are the they? It's the politicians. It's the people who want power and control. But they are the ones who are destroyers to gain that power and control. On contrast, I want you to be a producer. So these three steps are, pro- are how producers create value in the marketplace, gain the power, control the, the centers of influences, yet they do it in a way that is more sustainable, more stable, and it ultimately has more power over time. The three steps are choose your associates carefully because you don't want to bring somebody into your group who's really a destroyer. Who has the same ideas and, and they profess the same beliefs as you and they, they talk the good talk. And then when you get them in your group, they're just wrecking stuff. They're wrecking it so they can take over the group. They're wrecking it because they want to shift the group's resources to their objectives. They maybe have secret objectives. Choose your associates carefully. Number two is that you want to build alliances of mutual gain. Now, in order to know what someone else wants to gain, you got to listen to them. You got to ask them questions. You have to be inquisitive. You have to look at their behavior. It's a lot of work, folks. Now, if you're just going to be a consumer and you're just going to kind of leech off the value somebody else is delivering, you're not really putting bringing anything to the table. So, if there's problems, you're going to get cut first. So, again, you have to build alliances of mutual gain. You have to understand what does the other person want. Folks go to work every day because they need a paycheck. But there's other folks that go to work because they have certain skills and value they can deliver to an organization to solve the problems of the organization. That makes them highly valued. That makes them highly compensated and ultimately gives them freedom in the marketplace because they can take that value elsewhere. Number three is you're going to cultivate value in the marketplace. And that's exactly what I was talking about. When you're around the right people and you're you're building bridges, making connections, It is a portable skill that you can take anywhere. And so when you're cultivating value for the marketplace, you now have supporters who benefit from supporting you beyond the rhetoric. They get tangible products from you. They respect your opinion because you're helping them solve problems. They are able to more easily measure the actions of your behavior. You don't need to tell somebody what great things you've done because individuals will have first-hand experience. Now to wrap this up, this works best when it is for the strict benefit of your local and regional community. One thing I've seen as a common theme through all the books and and, uh, the books on influence and politics and trade craft, it's really about a a group or a collective of independent nations. Now, you can have a collective of independent individuals, but it starts where you are right now. It's your relationship with your family. Now, remember we talked about spheres of influence in past programs. It's the relationship with your family. It's the relationship with your neighbor. It's the the community that you choose to live in. It's the the, uh, associations that you have from a mental or spiritual perspective. Now, one is not better than the other. See, the destroyers want you to believe that one religion is better than another religion. One belief system is better than another belief system. When they, when they do that, they eventually conflict, which creates additional division, and then the politician can come in to unify people. See, they're creating the problem that they're going to solve. We have a problem with Social Security and we'll solve it. Well, who created the problem? Well, the the, peop- the politicians borrowed money from the Social Security, and now there's a problem, and they're all promising to solve it, yet nobody solves it. See, again, we are about thinking, 
And it's easier to think when you can sit down one-on-one with a friend, sit down one-on-one with a business associate, sit down one-on-one with your family members, when you can bring people together for a Sunday dinner or meet at the country club or be a part of a fraternity or a social organization. I'll tell you right up front, the destroyers do not want societies and fraternities and church organizations and uh, communities of friends. And they don't want people who can sit down, get together and have a conversation. That is exactly why during health issues or health issues tied to political motivations, they call it, they cause people to separate. So that's why the ghettos were produced in Nazi Germany to separate the Jews from everybody else. Because if you realize the Jews were Germans just like anybody else, you may not want to throw them in jail. And that's why during COVID, the, the separation of individuals, uh, shutting down of organizations, if there are protocols to safely meet or to have doctors safely meet, then those protocols can be followed by any organization all the same. It doesn't, you know, how can someone be of aid to those who are sick, yet not have protocols for people to get together to organize relief efforts. See, folks, your community locally and regionally is going to be what's powerful in order to serve your unique needs. Now, there's other er characteristics of that that are important to understand because of the, uh, you know, you guys are in general the same climate. You can have this general same needs. You can organize resources and labor physically. We can talk about that at another time. But again, my three points here, my three actions for you is basically look through the people you associate with. Are you spending a bunch of time online with people you don't even know, yet neglect the needs of your neighbors? Are you uh, arguing with people rather than listening to their point of view and then being able to test their sincerity in having a solution? See, a lot of people just argue to argue. But if you listen to their position and then they don't give you a chance to talk and they're still yelling at you, then they just they don't want a solution. They want an argument. You didn't come there for an argument. You came there for peace, tranquility, uh, security. You came there for sustainable, uh, you know, to continue your lifestyle and improve it over time, to leave this world better for your children than you found it. Number two is when you're building alliances for mutual gain. Again, mutual gain. Both of you benefit. A lot easier to do when you're in a neighborhood, when you're in a community group, when you're in a church organization. Again, it doesn't matter what you believe. The beliefs you'll find are tend to be universal because there are some beliefs that improve people. See, some, belief, some beliefs that hurt people. So focus on the ones that help. You become a producer. You deliver value. You deliver security. You deliver what community needs. And you want to be for the specific rather than against what you don't want. See, the more you think about what you don't want, the more likely it's going to be to happen because you haven't set yourself up to get what you want. I know that's a bit esoteric, but if you're cultivating value for a marketplace, the only way really to do that is understand what's valuable to the marketplace and then deliver it. You can't just be creating value that you can't measure because then it's not really value. It's just stuff. And then if the stuff doesn't have have demand. It's not the fault of the stuff. It's not the fault of the people who you're trying to make it for. It's your fault and you can do something about it. So I know I've covered a lot today. And in fact, if you want me to cover this in a webinar, if you want to do a Q&A session, um, simply comment below or visit our website at www.insidestrategicrelations.com. We can talk specifically with examples about how po- politics often uh, uses the destructive behavior of this concept to break people apart and then build them back up in their image. Um, I want you to take the producer attitude here as you look at the segments that already exist and you do, you figure out which ones you can deliver value to. You don't have to deliver value to all of them, but start in your local community, start in your region, and start building value. It's going to be more stable. It's going to have a faster turnaround. It's going to be less impacted by the chaos that's out there. And ultimately, it's going to help you transform business relationships into profits guaranteed. I'm Justin Hitt. This is Inside Strategic Relations. Thanks for listening.